Okay, so good day class. So today we're the standards of professional practice uh, on regular design services, which is part of the IRR of RA 9266-02, which uh, replaces the 1979 UAP document 202. Okay, for our introduction for the applicability of this document, so it's applicable for individual and group practice foreign architects, BPO and KPO firms, then the architect's outputs may be expanded or increased depending on the requirements of the project. So projects class have different uh, scope and difficulty. Of course, uh, the out your output and involvement may uh, differ depending on the project type. So, what are the regular design services of an architect? So, in regular practice, the architect acts as the client's proponents, advisor, and or representative. He translates the owner's needs and requirements to spaces and forms in the best manner of professional service. So, as an architect class, you should know that you are the client's representative. So you are his or her advisor as well, then it's your job to translate his needs and requirements to something that is tangible or visual. As long as your design, it should conform with, of course, the, the different codes which the building industry of the Philippines, okay, like the National Building Code, the Structural Code, Plumbing Code, So, this is the architect's work. So, from the inception of the project, okay, so then you go to the analysis and study of the needs and requirements. Then you prepare the necessary instruments of service. Then it goes into the supervision during project implementation. So, the general contractor or builder turns over the completed project to the owner. So, What's a project definition phase? So, this phase involves the definition of the requirements of the project by the owner. The architect, in turn, informs the owner of the technical requirements of the concomitant professional phase. So, in this phase class, the architect consults with the owner to ascertain the conceptual framework and related requirements of the project and confirms such requirements with him. Then gathers relevant information and data leading to the definition of the requirements of the project, including the scope of the architect's services. Then reviews and defines the owner's space requirements and translate them into an architectural program. Okay, so I think you're uh, you're already introduced with architectural programming. So that's what you do when you do your proximity matrix, bubble diagrams, etc. So Prepare an initial statement of probable construction cost. So, when you're doing the probable construction co cost task, usually it's um, just a general, a generic idea of what the cost may be. Sometimes in uh, per square meter, in the case of uh, painting work, sometimes it's per square foot. So, it would really depend. Okay. So, the per square meter for a high-end residential building is different from the per square meter of a low end uh, building. Okay, so it, it has actually this is guide this is guided by your experience as well. Okay, so as you experience a lot of project types in this field class, you'll eventually have a grasp of how much uh, things uh, cost when you construct them. So let's go to the schematic design phase. So this phase consists of the preparation of schematic derived from the project definition phase leading to conceptual plans. Here the architect evaluates the owner's program, schedule, budget, project site, and proposes methods of project. He prepares the initial line drawings representing design studies leading to a recommended solution. 
including a general description of the project for approval by the owner, then submits to the owner a statement of the probable project construction cost or SPPCC based on the current cost parameters. Then we also have the contract documents phase. So based on the approved design development documents, the architect prepares the complete docu contract documents consisting of detailed designs and construction drawings, setting forth in detail the work required for the architectural, structural, electrical, plumbing, sanitary, mechanical, electronic, and communication work architect and the respective professionals involved. So, who prepares technical specifications describing the type and quality of materials, finish, and other general conditions under which the project is to be constructed. So, in the contract, also in the contract document phase, the architect submits to the owner seven sets of all construction drawing stations for the purpose of obtaining a building permit, then updates the probable construction cost on changes in scope, requirements, or market conditions. Of course, class, here when you're already in the contract document phase, you already have a more detailed idea of the project. Hence, you can already provide the owner with cost of the project, which is more detailed. So, assist the owner in filing the required documents to secure approval of government authorities having joined of the project. Then we also have the bidding or negotiation phase. So in this phase, the architect prepares the bid documents as forms for contract construction, forms for invitation to bidders, forms for bidders' proposals, general conditions of contract, etc. Then the architect also assists the owner from the early stage, stay establishing a list of prospective contractors to awarding the construction contract. Then for competitive bids procurements, the architect uh, furnishes complete of bid documents for the purpose of bidding in as many set where to conduct a successful bidding. The set documents are loaned to bidders at an amount sufficient to cover direct and indirect costs attendant to the preparation. Okay, so let's move on to Rayum plus 3 reimbursable expenses. So in some cases, I may request an architect to do work to require his personal time such as attending project-related meetings, conferences or trips, conducting ocular inspection to project sites, and conferring with others regarding prospective investments or ventures and the like. So for these particular activities, the architect has an eight on a per dime and honorarium basis, plus out-of-pocket expenses such as but not limited to travel, accommodations, and subsistence. So the SPP provides for more than one method of compensation on a project. Each project should be examined to determine the most appropriate method. So it will be up to you, class, as future practitioners in the field of architecture to determine what method of compensation uh, is most suited for the project that you're engaging with the client. Okay, so let's move to the next page. So, if the architect has, the owner has responsibilities as well. Okay, so one of the responsibilities of the owner is to provide information as to his requirements of the project. Then, when necessary, designate a representative authorized to act on his behalf. Then, promptly examine and render decisions pertaining to documents submitted by the architect to avoid unreasonable delay in the progress of the owner should issue orders to the general contractor only through the architect. Okay, so in construction class, uh, when, you, when you manage construction project, it, project is necessary that you establish an order. Okay, an order or chain of command in the site so that your workers would not be confused. Okay, so the owner should be the one should issue all orders through the architect, and then the architect issues the orders to the general contractor. Then the general contractor then cascades the orders to his staff on site. 
So, furnish or direct the architect to obtain at his expense a certified survey of the site, giving as may be required graphical and a relocational service surveys covering grades and lines of streets, alleys, easements, encroachments, and related information, boundaries with dimensions and complete data pertaining to existing buildings, structures, trees, plants, water bodies, wells, excavations or pits, etc., and other improvements and full information as to the available utility service lines, both public and private. Zoning, compliances, clearances, deeds of restrictions, encumbrances, and annotations to titles. So, I apologize if you hear some weird noises. So, I think uh, those are the owner, uh, the neighbors, the uh, dog or something. So, association guidelines and standards. So, investigations, tests, borings, and test pits necessary for determining soil and subsoil conditions. Then promptly pay for architect engineering and allied services required for the project. Okay. So practice class. These these are some these are the things that you must convey well and explain to the client well. Because it's not only you as the professional who have responsibilities to the project. The client also must be aware of his or her responsibilities. Okay. Especially the financial uh, responsibilities. The project will not run class without a budget okay so the lifeblood of the project plus it's the client's budget okay so as the architect it is your job to make sure that the the client's uh, hard-earned money is spent well on the project let's move so pay for the design and consulting services on Communication, electronics, and other specialty systems which may be required. Okay. So, if for example your project is a, a theater, of course it you will require consulting services, okay, or other specialty and other specialty systems as well. Then arrange and pay for such legal auditing, insurance, counseling, and other services as may be required for the project. Pay for all expenses incurred in the project uh, as called for in Section 7, other conditions on services, and all taxes including VAT but not including income tax that the government may impose as a result of the services rendered by the architect on the project. Whether the services were performed as a natural person, individual practitioner, or as a juridical entity, such as sole proprietorship proprietorship, partnership, or corporation. But with regards to this class, like what I've said earlier, please, uh, when you're practicing already, explain to your client uh, well. Otherwise, it might lead to misunderstandings. Okay? Okay, then if the owner observes or otherwise becomes aware of anything that may impair the successful implementation of the project, he shall give prompt written notice to the architect. Okay. Then there are also other conditions on services. So the conditions for the architect's fee. So the architect's fee is based on the project construction cost, where the architect has to render additional services, additional compensation shall be required. So if for example, class, the project requires additional uh, 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 entails addendums okay, from the original scope of the contract. Of course, there has to be additional so other services. So other services that may be needed in order to complete the services of acoustic and illumination engineers, specialists, mural painters, sculptors are to be recommended by the architect for the owner's approval. Costs for these services are to be paid for separately by the owner and shall be subject to a coordination fee to the architect. Then, for scale models, 3D models, and walkthrough presentations, should a scale model, 3D model, and or walkthrough presentation of the project design be necessary, 
the art to be recommended by the architect for the owner's approval. So, costs for the services are to be paid for separately by the owner and shall be subject to a coordination fee payable to the architect. Okay, then other conditions on services. So, per dime and uh, traveling expenses. A per dime plus traveling and living expenses shall be chargeable to the owner whenever the architect or his duly authorized representative is required to perform services at a locality beyond 50 kilometers from his established office as it appears in the architect's letterhead. So, for extra set of contract documents, the owner shall pay the architect for additional sets of contract documents. Then for if the architect renders additional professional services ordered by the owner after the approval of the architect's output, he shall pay the architect for extra time, resources, drafting, and other office expenses. Okay. Uh, so I got confused with the slides class. I'm not wearing my glasses right now. This is an important concept uh, for you to learn as well. Uh, the concept of work suspended or abandoned. So if the work of the architect is abandoned or suspended in whole or in part, the owner shall pay the architect for the services rendered or is due at the stage of suspension or abandonment of the work. So the primary service of the architect is the preparation of architectural plans, designs, specifications, and other building construction documents. So, these are sets of detailed instructions that shall serve as the basis for the general contractor to implement the project. So, once the architect documents, the architect has completed the detailed design and contract documents phase of the project, which is equivalent to 90% of his work. So, when the owner therefore fails to implement the plans and documents, for the construction as prepared by the architect, the architect is entitled to receive a compensation of at least 90% of the architect's fee. Okay? So if the work is suspended or abandoned class, then you already rendered the services, you are entitled to at least 90% of, uh, of the professional fee to cover your effort. Then you have uh, here different... So, if the portions of the buildings are erected at different periods of time, thus increasing the construction period and the architect's burden of services, charges pertaining to services rendered during the construction phase shall be adjusted proportionately. So, when the suspension of construction exceeds a period of six months, the fee for the remaining works shall be doubled. Then you have here the services of specialists. Consultants, so if the owner requires the services of specialist consultants, they shall be engaged with the consent of the architect. So the cost of their services shall be paid for separately by the owner and shall not be deducted from the architect's fee. I have uh, some technical problems with my mouse. Then let's go to, so, should the owner require the architect to design movable or fixed pieces of cabinets and other elements, site development plan components, urban design components, and other items of similar nature, the owner shall pay the architect in addition to the architect's fee. The compensation shall be BC under SPP document 203. Then for full-time construction so upon the recommendation of the architect and with the approval of full-time construction supervisors as will be deemed necessary shall be engaged and paid by the owner. If no project construction manager is present, the full-time construction supervisor shall be under the technical control and super architect and shall make periodic visits. Then estimates. So any SPC cost estimate submitted by the architect can attain only a certain degree of accuracy. So as the architect has no control over the cost of labor and materials or the many factors that go into competitive bidding, 
it does not assume any professional responsibility for such cost estimates unless glaring errors or discrepancies are clearly evident. Then government taxes and services. The architect's fee is a net amount. Any tax, exclusive of income tax that the nationals may impose on the architect as a consequence of the services performed of the property by the owner. So, remember this class, this is really important, 7.13. You have to really explain well that well to your uh, future clients. Otherwise, um, there's no standings. So, what's really important class is that before you start a project is that you have to have a contract. Okay. In that contract, you outline everything in detail. Then explain the contract in detail as well to the client. Let's go, go to the ownership of documents. So all designs, drawings, models, other contract documents and copies thereof prepared, duly signed, stamped and sealed and furnished as instruments of service are the intellectual property and documents of the architect. The work for which they are made is executed or not and are not to be uh, are not, and are not to be reproduced or used on any other work except with a written agreement of the architect. So what this means, class, that if you have a project, okay, that agreement is only limited to that project. Okay? So if it should not be reproduced outside that agreement. So if you agree that to build a certain building on a certain site, it does not give the owner the right to build the same special uh, site as well so except if there's a written agreement between the architect and the client now cost records so during the progress of work the owner shall furnish the architect a copy of the records of expenses being incurred in the construction so upon completion of the project the owner shall furnish the architect a copy of the summary of all cost of labor Services, materials, equipment, fixtures, and all items used at and for the completion of the construction. And let's go to the design and placement of signs. So all sign boards of the general contractor, subcontractors, jobbers, and dealers that shall be placed the, during the progress of construction, construction shall be approved by the architect as to size, design, and contents. After the completion of the project, the owner or his building lessee shall consult the architect for the design, size of all signboards, letterings, directories, and display boards that will be placed on the exterior public areas attached to the building project in order to safeguard the owner's interest. So nothing shall be installed inside or outside of the building that would compromise its safety and aesthetics. Now let's move to the uh, project construction cost also ECC or project as herein referred to means the cost of the completed building to the owner including the structure planetary plumbing sanitary and uh, electrical fixtures mechanical equipment elevators escalators air conditioning systems fire protection systems alarm and clock system communication and electronics is the building and all items indicated in the plans designs drawings and specifications prepared by the architect, the construction cost of other items planned, and such as the architectural interiors, site development plan elements, and other items of similar nature additionally planned, designed by the architect, are also part of the PCC. Use and the labor for the installation are part of the PCC. So if this item owner Below its market cost, the cost of the material labor shall nonetheless be computed on the basis of the current and fair market value cost. The PCC does not include any of the fees for the architect, the engineer, and specialist consultants, or the salaries of the construction inspectors. So when you talk about the PCC cost or the probable construction cost of the project, you're only talking of the cost in building the structure. Okay? That's excluding the fees for the professionals which will be involved in it. Now, uh, development cost. So, project development cost shall include the cost of the construction, 
as well as all professional fees, permits, clearances, and utilities and cost of acquiring the project site, etc. So the difference between PCC and PDC or project development cost is that when you talk about project development cost, your fees for the professionals and the architect as well is already including included on that. So when you talk about the PCC or probable construction cost, you're only talking about the cost of the building itself. Okay. So we're going to have an activity class. So please refer to our use and our Facebook uh, uh, group as well. So I'll be posting class um, the links in our use step, which is the uh, official platform, the school, and also at the face at our Facebook groups that those who have limited data can access uh, it as well. So it it will just be up to you. Okay, so if you have any further questions or clarifications, last please don't hesitate to contact me. Okay, so I hope you're all doing fine. Stay meeting.